So I have been through part one, two, and three of our home router videos, and it's not enough. I want more. I, I don't feel like I've gotten enough value out of replacing my nice little five watt router with something that is like this big behemoth 800 horsepower router. Well, the next step is enhanced security. You, you wanna really turn it up to 11 with security. Now, we're gonna warn you up front, turning it up to 11 means false positives. It means <laughs> so, many false oh, so many false positives. So many false positives. Uh, just when you're, you know, in a hurry to get something done, this will block it. So this is a plugin for PFSense, and all you have to do is go to the package manager and install it one click uh, before you set it up. It's called Suricata. Now, you might have heard of Snort. Snort was sort of the previous iteration of this, but like a lot of open source, lovely software, it was purchased by a corporation and is in the process of being ruined. <laughs> it was so amazing, and then <laughs> not so much. This is this is actually really just your first. I don't, if you've never really used the PFSense package manager thing, this is a big leap for your first foray into cool stuff with the package manager. But this is an intrusion detection system, an intrusion prevention system, deep packet inspection. This is all of those things. If you are studying to become a network engineer or you want to learn more about networking, this is it. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is an incredible tool that you will see over and over again in the enterprise. And you too can run it on your lowly home router that you built from computer e-waste garbage, whatever. It also has the great advantage of crowdsourcing. If you've ever used an ad blocker, all those wonderful ad lists that come from people reporting bad things, well, they report bad things about network intrusion as well. And you can reap the benefits of that because this will pull down lists. <laughs> Why is Pyongyang trying to connect to my network again? I don't understand. <laughs> it's going to be flagged. It's, gonna, it's like, no, that IP address is not allowed. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> to begin, all you really need to do is go to the package installer and click install. It'll take a few minutes, maybe more than a few minutes, depending on what kind of hardware you've installed PFSense on but you'll get you know, output on the screen showing you uh, what's going on with the package installation. And then once it's done, you're gonna have a new service under your services menu on PFSense. Now, when we talk about the length of this installation, we should also talk about PFSense is lightweight. It's very lightweight software. You can run it on garbage, but when you install this, you're gonna need slightly better garbage yeah. because this does eat up a little bit of resources. Considerably better garbage. Now what this does, the way that it works, is it listens on your network interfaces for traffic. And in order to do this well, you're gonna to have to have it listen on both your LAN interface and your WAN interface. Think about having a telephone conversation with somebody. It's like, you know, you're, you think your neighbor is like, you know, a Russian spy or a Chinese spy or, you know, something. It's like they fall into the red or whatever. And you can only hear one side of the conversation. That's not really super useful. If you're going to, you know, figure out what's going on, figure out if they're a spy or just, you know, the nice little old lady, you can totally get, you know, more mileage from that by listening to both sides of the conversation. This is no different. You need to listen on the internet side as well as your network side. It's a naive assumption that little old ladies aren't filthy comedy <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. Now, on the, on the internet side of your router, there's going to be a ton of stuff trying to connect to you and do stuff all of the time you are going to see a ton of traffic from Tor. You're going to see a ton of traffic for people trying to figure out if you've got a weak VOIP system, just all kinds of crazy stuff on the WAN side. But sometimes if something gets inside your network, you will see traffic on the LAN side that leaves the WAN side. And so that traffic, when it's logged on the LAN side, might not tell you enough information about uh, the destination IP address that it was going to or the type of traffic that it was using. Or maybe you, you had some device that requested an open port, and then you get something from the internet side uh, for universal plug and play. So this will catch all of that through those rules and definitions. It's actually very complicated, way more complicated than we can get into for this video. But if you read and you go through the menus, and you take it slow and you do some careful Googling, this video has enough information that you can get started and also, you know, prevent yourself from wrecking anything if, if it sort of goes nuts blocking everything. You can remove the rules or disable rule sets or temporarily allow something or, you know, temporarily suspend it. So basically, you just begin by setting it up on each of your network interfaces on the LAN side and the WAN side. You may also want to set it up on your VPN interface as well. So that would be a third interface, depending on what you're doing on the VPN side. 
Although that's a bit less important because usually your VPN provider doesn't really allow much on the incoming side of things to come through. But it depends on the ISP, depends on the VPN provider. Now we talked about those crowdsource lists. There's actually a lot of those. And you can decide how much you want to include as far as rules that it will automatically update. And uh, you actually saw on the previous screen the intervals at which it updates. So you control all of that. At first, you probably don't want to pick everything because that's a lot of rules and <laughs> so many false positives. You can see the list that we've chosen here. Yeah, we've picked the emerging threats open rules. Um, and you'll see that there are also options available for the snort rules. You can sign up for a free account. It's supposed to be for non-commercial use and get yet more rule sets. But this is a huge set of rules that is broken into subcategories. Now we're gonna actually make sure this is working by tagging a download with curl um, that is a known piece of, of malware. And in order to do that, we have to enable the emerging threats rule set and further enable the suspicious user agents. So think about what's happening here. We've got a connection with curl that we're trying to do out to Google but we've set our user agent to be a user agent of a known piece of malware. Like this user agent will not occur unless you've got crazy people that are running curl setting it manually, or you have a horrible piece of malware on your network. Because we have set this and we try to connect to Google, we can no longer connect to Google with this user agent. Why not? This thing saw the packet and said, oh shit, this is malware. I'm going to block it. And it blocked the connection. So as you can imagine, as new malware is discovered, it goes into these lists and these same kinds of rules are set so that as the world finds out about it, your router will find out about it and you don't really have to do anything. You can set the update interval to be as often as you like, although I generally recommend daily updates unless you're using this for commercial interests or something like that. And then once every four or six hours is, is not a bad idea, but generally for home use, you know, once a day is completely fine. Just like there are lists of, you know, known bad pieces of malware, there are also known bad IP addresses. There are a lot of IP addresses out there that have a lot of bad things going on with them that are used for, for hacking and criminal activity. If you so choose, you can block those entire IP addresses, known threat or not, in the same way because they will show up on the IP reputation list. If somebody has a bad WordPress that hasn't been upgraded, turns into a spam bot, you get to know about it. <laughs> and Automatically your blocked. Know about it. <laughs> Why can't I get to this guy's blog? He was so, oh, he did an update. <laughs> oh. So false positives and alerts, where do you see them? You've got the alerts tab and the blocked tab. The blocked tab shows you stuff that's actually blocked. Now you've got a couple of choices when something is blocked. You can just unblock it, which it will get blocked again if it happens again. Or you can say, okay, I wanna disable this rule or I wanna disable this, uh, this part of the rule set or I wanna leave the rule enabled, but just suppress it. If you leave the rule enabled, but you just suppress it, it'll still be logged and you can get to it. Uh, but it will no longer trigger a block action. And if you disable the rule, then it'll no longer do anything with it at all until the next rule update. Now, we've probably said it three times at this point. We can't stress enough. <laughs> False positives. Yeah. You're going to spend a lot of time looking at this list. Yep. And you might not know what those things are, and you might be like, oh, God, can I safely ignore it? Is this the Russians? <laughs> and a lot of the times you probably can. But it's a good idea just to, you know, temporarily suppress it and try to figure it out what it is. You know, hey, you can learn a lot from all these various little things that are happening there. Now, the discussion for this one is also gonna be really interesting on the forum because we've got a lot of information security people on the forum. They're gonna have recipes and specific lists and lists of, of lists that they recommend that they like. And so you can mix and match and, and put it together. And that's a fun exercise if you're into this kind of thing. If you just want something that set it and forget it, there are just a few rule sets that you can check and the number of false positives will be significantly diminished, but you should still be familiar with how to keep an eye on and adjust the block list. If you really get into this, you can actually have the block list and the alerts forwarded to another system outside your router. You can actually set up an entire telemetry system of your own that will put Microsoft's to shame. So once you've gone through and read all of the options and gotten all of your interfaces set up, on the interfaces screen, you'll wanna click the play button so that it turns green to actually start the listener on those interfaces. If the listener is not running, it's not going to do anything as far as blocking traffic goes. You can also keep in mind that if this thing is driving you crazy and you've bitten off more than you can chew, you can use that same interface to turn it off. And that's pretty much it. You're, you are up and running with a state-of-the-art intrusion detection system. Now, that's a lot to take in, and this is probably the biggest leap that we've given you so far. 
I mean, videos one through three were pretty simple. Cakewalk. This one, a lot more in depth. There's a lot more to learn here. But keep in mind that you've already, if you've gotten to this point, you're so you're light years ahead of that standalone router that you used to be using. <laughs> and so you're in a pretty good spot and just, you know, keep going from here and take it baby steps at this point and feel content and good in knowing that you're so much better than the normies. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny because if you really get well versed in this and set up your own rules with this, uh, you you know, this is really the kind of thing that you encounter in the enterprise. And these appliances, like if you if you license this from Cisco as part of like your your whole IDS package, you're looking at a ten thousand dollar a year setup, plus or minus, at the low end. So uh, you know, but yeah, but basically the same thing, the same functionality is available in open source. Yes, it, it all comes down to the rule sets. I mean, Cisco still has their commercial rule set, but the open source ones aren't bad either. So take a look at it, kick the tires. If you're into this kind of thing, it will really help your career and understanding and just all sorts of fun stuff. So yeah, it's really neat. We're going to hang out in the forums. I'm Wendell. I'm Ryan. And we'll see you there.